Most modern video games are filled with tons of important decisions that you the player need to make. Like whether or not to chop off Lee's arm in The Walking Dead, deciding what faction you want to side with in Fallout 4, and whether you save Josh or Ashley in Until Dawn. But in reality, they don't really matter. And the interesting part about it is it's actually a good thing. So what does it mean for our choices to matter in the first place? You can argue that moving your player one step to the left is a meaningful choice because your game is now different than your friend's game. And you can also argue that the most important choice ever made by anybody on Earth didn't actually matter because all humans are are just chemical reactions taking place on a tiny little rock floating around in an unfathomably large universe. So to make sure we're all on the same page here, I have three criteria that a choice for a video game has to pass in order for it to actually matter. Number one. The choice has to concern the story, and not the gameplay. Picking your class in a first person shooter is definitely a meaningful choice because it affects what kind of game you're about to play. However, that's not the kind of choice I want to get into in this video. Number 2. The choice must have the plot diverge, and stay divergent. So choices that have the same result regardless of what you picked, or go on a separate path temporarily, are not choices that actually matter. Three. The choice must provide a completely new experience if the player were to go back and replay the game and choose differently. When passed through these three criteria, we can see that pretty much every choice that you make in video games doesn't actually matter. And I said pretty much because there are a few choices that actually do matter, but we'll touch on those later. So if none of your choices actually matter, why does it feel like they do? If you're finding yourself asking that question, then congratulations friend, you are under the spell of the illusion of choice. The biggest way games trick you into thinking that your choices matter is by temporarily diverging the plot, but then have it quickly go back to the same path you would have been on if you had made the choice differently. Or if the fake choice is set up well enough, it can literally result in the exact same outcome. Minor spoilers for Until Dawn. When you have to choose between saving Josh and Ashley, many players initially start to panic a little bit because they know whatever they choose will impact the story. What they don't know is that they literally have no choice at all. Josh always dies. Supermassive does a great job of setting all of this up. First, they make Ashley a much more likable character than Josh. So like 90% of the time, people are gonna pick to save Ashley. But for those who wanted to save Josh, the game does a little sneaky sneaky to you. Based on intuition alone, do you think pulling this lever to the left will make the saw go to the right? No. But the psycho says, Choose who you will save. This clash between intuition and instruction causes the players who wanted to save Josh to feel like they had made a mistake and accidentally killed him. But regardless of which way the lever is pulled, Josh always dies. The geniusness behind this choice is that the player will blame himself and not the game. Now, lying to your players and making them blame themselves sounds like it would be terrible game design. But think about how Chris, the character you're playing, would feel. The exact same as you. Now let's hypothetically modify this scene. Say there are two buttons, one for Ashley and one for Josh, each connected to a saw aimed at the appropriate person. If the psycho says choose who you will kill, and the player presses Ashley's button, and Josh ends up dying, well then the player would think something fishy's going on, and then be pretty mad at the game. So by cleverly setting up this scene, Supermassive makes you think you've made, or messed up, a very important decision, when in reality, you have no control at all. Oh, and if you think this is a cheap technique, just go play the game, and then you'll understand. That was an example of a choice that didn't matter at all, because regardless of what you chose, the exact same thing happened. But sometimes the game can temporarily diverge, but eventually return to the intended path after a while. Minor spoilers for The Walking Dead this time. Unlike Until Dawn's fake choice, at the end of Season 1, Episode 1 of The Walking Dead, the player is faced of whether to save Carly or Doug. This seems like a huge choice, because depending on what you choose, the rest of the whole season will be different. And, well, kinda. Regardless of who gets saved, the survivor, who I'll just be referring to as Kug, does the exact same thing in Episode 2 as the person who died. Kug also doesn't play a huge role in Episode 2 anyways. And in Episode 3, well, Kug dies, in the exact same way whether it's Carly or Doug. Episodes 2 and 3 technically do play out a tiny bit differently, based on which part of Kug survives Episode 1, but this is only temporary divergence because after Kug dies in Episode 3, the game goes on the exact same path regardless of the choice. So those are the main ways you can get tricked into thinking that your choice actually matters. 
But what about the choices that give completely different endings? Technically, those choices pass the criteria and therefore are meaningful choices. So this whole time, I've been lying to you. And sorry about that. But they might not have as big of an impact as you may think they do. And let's call these types of choices big decisions. Most games with big decisions really only have one or two of them that just affect how the main plot ends up. Most great stories follow the same general formula, exposition, inciting incident, rising action, climax, and resolution. When making big decisions in games, it happens right here, at the climax. So big decisions that cause permanent divergence in a story really only occur right at the end. So even though there is a meaningful choice in there, 90% of the game will still be the exact same. I could go into depth about all the games that do this, but pretty much every game that has multiple endings does something similar to this technique. So why is it like this? How come video games don't let us make choices that actually matter? Or when they do, they only really change the kind of ending we get. Let's look back at our plot structure for a minute. If there's a big decision at the start of the game, then two separate plots have to be created for the exact same game. And if along these plot lines, we need another big decision, that's four plots that we have to make. This number grows exponentially. So if we want a game with 30 big decisions, well then we're looking at over a billion plots. Time and resources are scarce. So when making games, developers have to optimize as much as possible. So if something is a real part of the game and the player noticed it, resources were well spent. And if something is a part of the game and the player doesn't notice it, that's a waste of resources. Now, if something is not in the game and is not noticed by the player, well, that's just not really applicable. But if the player notices something that is not actually real in the game, then they are experiencing a phenomenon that Teen and Sylvester calls in his GDC talk about RimWorld, apophenia. Apophenia is the tendency to perceive meaningful connections between unrelated things. Apophenia is that feeling you get when you see the Among Us guy everywhere in the real world. And apophenia is a great state to have your players in because they notice and appreciate stuff that you didn't even put in the game, causing them to think that your game is more deep and intricate than it actually is. And fake meaningless choices is just apophenia because the player thinks he's going on a unique journey, but he's actually on the traditional path that everyone else is on. However, this illusion does get shattered the second your player goes back and replays the game. So developers can either spend a lot to get stuff that the player doesn't even notice with meaningful choices, spend a bit and have the player notice everything with linear games, or spend a bit and have the player notice even more things than are in the actual game with apophenia. That's the rationale behind why so many games have meaningless choices. So then, how do we solve this meaningless choice problem? Easy, we don't. This problem is an incredibly difficult one to solve but I'd argue that it's not even a problem at all, and that meaningful choices can actually ruin a game a lot more than meaningless ones can. The first reason is that divergence is really hard to keep track of, even for a split second. Spoilers for Fallout 4. In Fallout 4, the leader of the Minutemen faction, Preston Garvey, gets pretty upset with you when you decide to side with the Raiders at the end of the Nuka World DLC. He's like, you crossed the line, General. There are some things I can't forgive. How dare you? I can never trust you again. And then you can be like, hey, let's go attack the Institute. And he'll be like, great, I have some good news for you. And then a second later, you try talking to him again, and he refuses to talk to you, saying, some things are just unforgivable. I'll have a video of this actual conversation linked down in the description if you wanted to see it. But that whole thing was to show you that even when a story diverges just a little bit, the story as a whole is at risk of becoming less cohesive, with elements from the path you took potentially bleeding in with stuff that you didn't do. This obviously is not intentional and just the result of resources being prioritized somewhere else or just an oversight. And for some, this might be a funny thing, but regardless of whether you think it's funny, it does break immersion. Another reason meaningful choices can be bad is that they can result in boring stories that don't have good structure at all. Stories usually have what's called a call to adventure at the start, which kind of just kicks the plot into motion. Now, if you were in the character's shoes, chances are you'd just reject this call to adventure entirely because you would rather live your life than go on a crazy dangerous journey. In Until Dawn's spiritual successor, The Quarry, the smartest thing to do if you were one of the counselors would be to listen to Chris Hackett's advice and just hide in the lodge all night. Then everyone would survive and that's that. But the story would be so boring with no rising action or climax. It would just be exposition, inciting incident, 
And then resolution. You might argue that this would be a fun little Easter egg to just have in the game for those who want to see it, but when you have people playing that sort of game with the mindset of keeping every single character alive, they're going to make the most rational choice, even if it's boring. So they would choose this option in a heartbeat, have an incredibly boring experience, and develop a negative opinion of the game because of a choice that they made themselves. Finally, games that have multiple endings suffer from what I like to call true ending syndrome. True ending syndrome is something I made up, which basically just means that players will always argue about what ending is the true ending. Now the whole point of games with multiple endings is to play the game how you want and see how the choice you make affects the overall world. A great example of this is with Detroit Become Human. That game, according to Reddit, has 85 different endings. Granted, some of these are pretty similar to other endings, but amongst all of them, there is a lot of variety. And this variety can only lead to one thing, true ending syndrome. And uh, spoilers for Detroit Become Human. After I finished the game, I had Connor crush the revolution, kill North, Marcus, and Hank, and then get decommissioned. I was a little bit upset when I saw videos on the internet about the true ending and having Connor becoming deviant and claiming Detroit for the androids. It baffles me that people want to play games with multiple endings and meaningful choices, but then make sure it's known that there's only one way of actually playing the game, and if you don't do it, then you did it wrong. So to wrap everything up, games mask their true linearity with meaningless choices. These meaningless choices have their benefits and drawbacks. So what's better, a game with a bunch of meaningless choices or just a straight up linear game? And the answer is that it depends. If having player choice is vital to the experience, like in Until Dawn, then meaningless choice is all the way. If the game is more of an RPG, where the player can project himself into the main character, then having big decisions at the end, where you get to decide the fate of the world you just played in, is actually a great idea. And if your game already has a well-defined protagonist, then a straight up linear experience is probably the best idea. Spoilers for The Last of Us and Walking Dead Season 1. Think about how much less powerful the ending to The Last of Us would be if Joel could have just walked out of the hospital. Or how much less powerful the ending of Walking Dead Season 1 would be if your choice to chop off Lee's arm mattered and actually saved his life. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here, welcome. But you should know, I don't usually make videos like this. I usually just make games, not break them down. But I have been doing a bit of research on this topic for a while now for a project that you'll probably be seeing in about a month and thought this would be a fun video to make. Oh, and I'm also done with Unity, like completely, just because of the stuff that they've been doing as a company. And there's a game jam coming up really soon that I wanted to participate in. So you might be able to put two and two together to figure out what my next video is gonna be about. Thanks again. See you soon.